Hi, this is Jesper from Velocity Peak, and uh, in this two-part X Particles and Cinema 4D tutorial, we're gonna make this. And uh, in this first part, we're gonna make the object that drives the particles. All the project files are available on velocitypeak.com. Okay, let's jump in. Okay, so let's start. It's a very standard scene, 30 frames per second, 120 frames on the timeline. And I do have a few other elements that we'll use later on for rendering. Uh, but to start, let's add a tube. And I am gonna set an inner, inner radius of 60, keep the outer radius of 100. Uh, but to smooth this out, let's do 42 for rotation segments. I want some cap segments, so let's do three. Um, height of 32, and I just need two height segments. And uh, I also want the orientation to be on plus Z. So now the tube is set up, I'm gonna convert this to an editable object. So I can either hit C on the keyboard or just click this uh, button here. So now this is a polygon polygonal object. And what I wanna do is I wanna select all the polygons on the edges here. Uh, so to do that, I'm gonna go to polygon mode and then I'm gonna hit U, L on the keyboard for loop selection. Cause now I can select the entire row of polygons like so. And then I'm gonna hold down shift and select the second row as well. And what I wanna do first is I wanna make sure that I have some space between the teeth. Uh, and the way I'm gonna do that is by extruding inner or use inner extrude. Uh, so we can go to Mesh, Extrude Inner, or just use the shortcut I, which, which is what I'm gonna do, I. And then I'm gonna click and drag to the left. And uh, I'm gonna undo Control Z, because uh, I wanna show you normally, probably by default, you're gonna have preserved groups turned on like so. And then if you try to do this, you're just gonna get this. So I'm gonna undo again. So I wanna make sure that preserved groups is unchecked. And I'm gonna go a little closer. I'm gonna click, drag to the left. So I can eyeball this, but I can also go into the offset here and I can set a specific value. So I'm gonna set this to one. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again, click and drag. But this time I'm gonna set the offset to 0.75. And this is gonna work as the emitter area later on when we add X particles. Uh, this is also gonna be the basis for the teeth. So I wanna make sure that I save this as a selection. Uh, so to do that, I'm gonna go to select and then set selection. And let's give this a more meaningful name. Um, emitter area and teeth, like so. And then I'm gonna go get my move tool, click away, cause I don't need to see the selection. So to extrude the teeth now, I'm gonna use Mo Extrude. So if I select two, the tube, and then hold on Shift, go up to the Mo Graph menu, and select Mo Extrude, and I held on Shift just to make sure that Mo Extrude becomes a child of the tube. And now Mo Extrude by default is gonna extrude every polygon on its normal, uh, which isn't what we want, but in the Mo Extrude under the Object tab, we have a polygon selection slot. So I can take the selection that I just made and pull it in there, and now we have our teeth. Now you can set things like extrusion depths if you want more. I'm gonna leave that at four. And then we, if you go to transform, we can see that by default, it's transforming each polygon here to 0.98. Uh, I'm gonna do 0 0.96. I'm gonna make it just a little smaller, 0.96. And then you can extrude them more or less, you can even go inwards if you want. Now I'm gonna set this to 0.2. So they're always gonna be extruded just a little bit, but I'm gonna make uh, the extra extrusion with an effector now. Uh, so I'm gonna go to the Mo Extrude, I'm gonna go to um, the Mo Graph menu and get a plane effector. And let me zoom out. And to make sure that it's added to the Mo Extrude, you wanna go to the Mo Extrude and to effectors and make sure that the plane effector is here. If it's not, just drag it down there. 
And uh, I actually want to make sure that the plane effector is below as well, not a child, just below, like so. So that it doesn't look right. Um, if we go to the plane effector and to the parameter tab, we can see that it's affecting position. And I want it to affect position, but not on the Y. So let's set that to zero. And let's instead do Z. I'm going to do 15 on the Z. Now it's a little too short. Um, if I go back to the Mo extrude and to the object tab, we have transform options from root or per step. Now from root treats this as a whole object, but if I do this per step, it's now gonna, um, the plane effector is now gonna affect them on a per step level. So we have a slightly different result here. So this is what I want. Now in the plane effector and the parameter, I also wanna scale them down a little bit. So under the scale, uh, here, I can enable that and say minus 0.3 for scale X and do the same thing for Y, uh, minus 0.3. So now we have this kind of thing going on, which looks kind of interesting on its own. Uh, but I also want to bevel this. Um, it's rarely a good idea to have perfectly straight computer edges like this. So whenever you can, you should try to bevel. Uh, and we can use a bevel deformer in this case. Uh, so let's go to the deformers menu and get a bevel deformer. Now, I'm gonna, if I put it above the Mo extrude, it's just going to affect uh, the base object and ignore the teeth. Uh, but if I put it underneath, it's going to uh, bevel the teeth as well, which is what I want. Now, we want to be careful with the bevel deformer because it could easily break the geometry. And right now, it's beveling all the edges the same. It doesn't, it doesn't take into account how thick the, the geometry is or anything like that. So uh, you want to be careful with the bevel deformer so that you don't break your geometry. So, But in the bevel deformer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set an offset of 0.2, like so, and add some subdivisions. So 2 for the subdivisions. And uh, before I go any further, I want to add this entire thing to a cloth surface because later on we're going to add a semi-transparent material to this. And for that to work properly, we want to have some actual thickness. And uh, that's going to affect also how the beveling works. So let's add, go to select a tube, hold down the Alt key, and go and add a cloth surface. Now the cloth surface, I don't want any subdivision, so let's turn that off. But I will have 0.1 on the thickness. So you can see that that had an effect there. So in the plane effector, I'm gonna, I mean, in the bevel deformer, I should say, um, I'm gonna go back. And if you wanna have more fine control over the beveling, you can actually make a selection and use this slot here to only bevel the selected areas. Uh, one thing that also makes a big difference is the mitering here. Uh, so if I change this from default to uniform, it's going to change this. Now, this is going to be on a per um, case basis, uh, but in this case, that makes it look a lot better. And I want to go around and make sure that it doesn't break it in other places and it looks fine. Now, occasionally, if you have problems with the bevel deformer, you can also use the angle threshold here to control where or how much it's going to be beveled. Um, so, but I'm going to leave it at 40, but it's just a good option to know that uh, sometimes you can control the beveling with an angle threshold. Okay, so that, these are the teeth, but obviously that is way too aggressive and I only want them to show up at sometimes. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to go to the plane effector and to the follow, and we're going to use fields now. Uh, so I'm going to go to the fields menu and I'm gonna add a spherical field. And uh, let's call this on spherical field, reveal teeth, like so. And uh, in the plane effector, uh, in fact, in the spherical field, if I, uh, let me get the move tool, I'm gonna make sure I'm in model mode. And I'm gonna drag the spherical field around. You can see wherever the spherical field is, we're gonna get the teeth. So 
I want to make this a little smaller. So if I go to this, let's make this 85. I think that's better. So what I could do is, of course, I could keyframe this to travel around the entire object like so. Uh, but an easier way to do this is to uh, align this to a spline. Uh, so I'm going to get a spline. I'm going to go get a circle spline. Circle for spherical uh, field. And I want to match the size of this circle spline with uh, the size of the tube. Uh, so that radius is 100. So let's do 100 uh, like that. And now on the spherical field, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say animation tag align to spline. And then it's uh, giving us a spline path field here. So let's take that spline that we made and pull it in there. And you can see that it jumps into position. And now we have a position slider, so we can actually drag this around like so. So I'm gonna keyframe this. Now, one thing that I like to do as I work is I may wanna go back and forth and kind of see different positions of, um, of the spherical field. So what I can do is I can take this entire uh, property and just drag it in here like so, and then I can actually do it directly in here. Now, if I click away, it's gonna disappear. So to make it uh, stay here all the time, what we can do, if I, I, I selected this, um, the align to spline tag again, I can right click on it and I can say show uh, always. And now it doesn't matter if I click away or working on some other object, I can always access this. And in fact, I can even keyframe it here as well. So I'm gonna go to 0% and I'm gonna go to frame zero and I'm gonna click this button here, which is gonna make a keyframe. And then I'm gonna go to the last frame, 120, and bring this up to 100 and click keyframe again. So now it's gonna go from zero to 100. Now there's an ease in on this. So I'm going to go to the position, right click, animation, and then sh uh, we can do show F curve. And then uh, I want to, we can take this one, we can drag it in here actually like so. And then I'm going to click this button here, which is going to convert these to uh, linear keyframes rather than splines. So now we're going to have a consistent speed. So as we start, and it's revealing the teeth. Now, I also want to do one more thing here. I, I don't want this spherical field to be on when we start. So I'm going to animate this on and off. And, and to do that, I'm just going to animate the size of it. So if I go to the spherical field and uh, the size, and I'm going to start by zero. On frame zero, I'm going to have a size of zero, keyframe. And then I'm going to go to frame 15. And I'm going to bring it back up to 85, like so. And then I'm going to go to frame uh, 90. And then click keyframe again. And then on frame 120, I'm going to bring it down to zero and keyframe. Uh, let me turn off the bevel and the cloth surface to see how this plays back. It's gonna, it should play back a little faster. So that's the uh, animation. Now it's too regular. So what I want to do now, I want to break it up so it's not as even. I don't want the teeth to be as even as they are. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use another field. Uh, but I want to stay a little organized here. So I'm going to create uh, a null. I'm going to call this one fields. Fields. And uh, I'm going to put that right above the plane effector. Not a child, just above, like so. Take this spherical field, put that in the fields, uh, null, and uh, let's go to the fields menu and add a shader field. And then put that in that same null. So, so I'm going to call this one shader field random. And now if I go to the plane effector and I pull this shader field down, 
everything is going to disappear. And that's because it completely overrides whatever is underneath. And we don't have any shaders yet. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to shader and I'm going to say noise. So now we can see that we are getting something. Uh, let's go into the noise and I'm going to leave the seed at its default. I'm going to leave the default noise type. And let me bring up the scale. I'm going to do 156 for the scale. And then let's pull this guy up. So now what I want to do basically is I want to create a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to pull this one up a little bit, the low clip and the high clip, something like that. And I'm just going to type in 30 for, uh, for the contrast. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, if you bring up the global scale, you have going to have bigger chunks. Uh, but I think 156 in this case is pretty good. Uh, so now we also need to combine the two fields. So how do we do that? Well, let's go back to the plane effector. And uh, I'm going to set the base field to normal. But the one on top here, to have them work together, I'm going to set the blending mode to multiply. So that is the effect. Now we have the effect. So if I play this back, this is what it looks like. Okay, that's the end of part one of the animation. This is the object that's going to drive the particles. And I'll show you how I set that up in part number two. But I do have a challenge for you. Uh, see if you can figure out how I did it. And it doesn't have to be exactly the way I did it, but see if you can figure out a way to do it. Now, I'm going to give you a hint. I'm using explosion and I'm advecting particles with explosion, but I'm not keyframing the advection, um, it's triggered when the teeth are at a certain distance away from the main object. That much I can tell you. So if you come up with something, post anything in the links below. And of course, any questions or comments that you may have. And if you got some value out of this, consider subscribing. And you can get all the project files uh, on velocitypeak.com. Thank you for sticking around and I'll see you next time.